the gift project started as um, an avenue for people to register either that they needed help or that they were willing to help so that I could connect people directly from anywhere in the world to um, help them out with a project or, or whatever they needed. New Year's Day 2020, I donated some towels to a wildlife shelter in Victoria and I went on a tour of the sanctuary, got talking to the owner and uh, she needed some help setting up a medical centre. So I used Facebook to put out a call to collect basic things like syringes and needles and whatnot and it kind of all just grew from there. And in my work as an anaesthetic nurse, I had started collecting the AAT mats, um, thinking that they would be good for wildlife rescue. And again, put out a Facebook post um, and sent out a lot of those. And then I got in touch with Haynes. Yep. There are approximately 20,000 rescuers and carers across the country in every state. Um, so the the scope for this program is huge because we've only just begun. We've sent out 164 um, and I've got people waiting on a list to get more. So, you know, the more people that hear about this, the more that get in touch and, and I'm sending them out um, several times a week now. We've now got Maggie Van Santen, who is a registered wildlife carer in WA. How are you, Maggie? I'm good, thank you, Simone. How are you? I'm good. Tell us about uh, your charity and uh, who you've got there on your lap. Um, well, I run a registered charity which is called Amaris Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, this is little Jeddah and her name means pretty girl. She came to me last week. Um, her mum was killed in a car accident a few months ago. Can you tell me how did you hear about Sarah Hart's work with the GIFT project? Oh, Sarah's been just this amazing whirlwind in the in the uh, wildlife caring space. Um, to have somebody on board like her, um, and she allows us just to do the caring when she does like a lot of the other work. You are awaiting your first delivery of air transfer mats. They're at the post office now, is that right? That's correct, yes. They, they're waiting for me to pick them up. And how do you think you might use them with your work? Can you give um, us some well, ideas? I would um, have them in the car for, for rescues. Um, just a couple of examples. Just recently we had a fence hanger that was just up the road. Um, she was probably about 15, 20 kilos. So that would have been so much easier to transfer her um, when you say fence hanger, just for people who don't work in rescue, what's a, fen a fence hanger and what, what was her injuries? A, a fence hanger is a kangaroo that tries to jump a fence and then gets caught in the wires. Um, she ended up having a broken hip and two broken legs. Wow. Um, so we would have been able to put her on the mat and bring her back here and well, she did have to be euthanised. Um, the other time one of mine got out and she broke her leg and she was a kilometre away from home so the, the transfer mat would have been so much easier to get her back home. And easier for you but also more comfortable for the animal to be handled that way in multiple Yeah, a lot more comfortable because when you're carrying them you could end up hurting them a lot more so that you could get them on a mat where they would be still. Um, it and would be a lot easier. Mm. I think everybody, every carer should have one because we all come in contact with having to uh, to rescue a, a larger um, joey, whether it's through a uh, through road trauma, through shootings, um, through hanging in fences. I mean, we all come across the larger animals, and they're the hard ones to to manoeuvre and to move around. So having one of those mats in the car on hand, I think, would be just so beneficial for everybody. Well, Jade has been very well behaved for the camera, so I think she likes it. Yeah, I think so too, her first introduction. <laughs> I hope she goes well. So cute. Awesome. Well, hopefully through this video, we can help you spread the word and um, help Sarah spread the word and get more donations coming your way. It's amazing work.
We'll talk to Laura DeLacy, who's the Product and Solutions Lab Manager at Haynes Medical Australia. Welcome, Laura. From your perspective at Haynes, uh, being the manufacturers of single patient use air transfer mats, how do you see this environmental partnership that you've got with the GIFT project? How do you see it benefits you guys? It's an enormous benefit. Um, the the thing with the air mats is it's an interesting product because they are a multi-material product, which means they can't easily be recycled. So with a product like that, it's it's difficult to find a way to repurpose or, or reuse it. And we were very lucky when Sarah got in contact with us um, about this project, because sometimes, I mean, even if we'd have all put our heads together to think of the best, you know, way, you know, what we can do with this product, you know, to to reuse it, we wouldn't have wouldn't have thought of this. But it's just the most brilliant use of our product. Yeah, it'll be really exciting to see how it all how it all evolves and and the difference it makes for um, rescue workers and um, and the hospitals as well. What was it that made Haynes uh, get on board with the GIFT project? Yeah, we jumped on board at this opportunity. Uh, when Sarah first found us, we couldn't believe our luck because we are always looking for ways to repurpose or reuse, the, particularly those products that can't be recycled. Uh, and we are all really acutely aware here that the healthcare sector um, you know, has a very big environmental impact, a big footprint. Um, I believe it's responsible for about 7% of uh, carbon emissions in Australia alone. So it really has a big impact. So things like this, giving hospitals a means to help them achieve their sustainability targets and KPIs, um, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, well, with our air transfer devices, they are predominantly used with a single patient. Uh, and by the, the end of a patient's stay, they're uh, they are usually completely unsoiled. So they're completely fit for purpose. Uh, it's just they, they can't be used with another patient. So that opens it up to, uh, to being used in another capacity and using it for animals is just the perfect fit for that. Um, okay. They don't yeah. have to be sterile, they're used in the bush right. ground. And exactly. they've still got a lot of life in them, I suppose, haven't they? They yeah. do, that's right. How are the hospitals so far responding? I know it's only in its infancy, but uh, what sort of hospitals are getting behind this program? We've had an enormous response. We've had we've got about ten hospitals on board, and also um, expressions of interest from uh, major hospital chains as well. So, yeah, it's all definitely gaining momentum and starting to move forward. So it's very exciting. If it's hospitals wanting more information, I'm very happy to come out and chat to them about it, or do it online or via phone uh, to set up a collection process. And then once once that's established and they're they're ready to go, they can just call me and we'll tee it up. I've got a um, a network of volunteers in each state who are ready to collect from any facility. Most facilities have a sustainability manager and sustainability champion, so I'm finding that particularly in theatre and day surgeries. Um, that's where the main use tends to be. So there's usually someone in that area who coordinates the collection process and then they get in touch with me for uh, actual collection. So I got in touch with Melbourne Zoo. Uh, they do a lot of marine rescue um, and uh, they are really excited to be receiving a donation of air transfer mats to use for uh, marine rescue and great apes. They're finding really useful, not only as a transfer mat, but as a thermoregulator during surgery for, um, for large animals. As long as they're not soiled with body fluids, then they're fine. It doesn't matter if they have a bit of chlorhex or betadine uh, on them. Most of them get used once and they have a sheet on top. So when we get them, they pretty much look brand new. And when you think about the circumstances in which they're used, rescuers are using them in, you know, out in the bush, in dirty environments, and they're being dragged along the ground and, and handled, um, you know, with 
unsterile animals on them, so they're not worried at all. There tends to be um, a, a collection champion, really, who coordinates it within their facility. So I ask that the facility gets them all into one place because there are volunteers picking them up. I, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible and as streamlined as possible. So to this point, hospitals have been sending them to one point, whether that be hospital reception or their, you know, their loading area so that we can just drive up and take them from one collection point. And that's been working well.